¿Qué tal, my fellow creatives? I'm the host that loves you the most, Ozeal, and I want to welcome you to the Creative Factor. This is a place, y'all. This is a place where we vibe about creative culture uh, and we help elevate your creative factor through community and entrepreneurship. And, you know, our guest today right here next to me, uh, he is uh, he sold a, a seven-figure tech uh, business company and it's one of the, the top Inc. Magazine fastest growing companies to pursue his path as a content creator entrepreneur. Now he's the founder of SGP Labs, F sgplabs.com, and he's also one of the leading voices in the space of building and scaling your content creation business. He's probably one of the hardest working content creators, educators that I know, and he's definitely mastered the science behind scaling your content game. Ladies and gentlemen, creators, I have the man probably with one of the dopest backgrounds I've seen in quite some time, oh, Stephen Pope in the building. What's up, Stephen? <sighs> What's going on, man? <laughs> I feel like I need to hit the sound effect, bro. I need nice to, to be here. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, yeah, and it's funny you mentioned that. Like, I'm not necessarily like a lighting expert, and people say that I, my my studio looks cool, so I'm glad that it uh, glad that it that it's cool, man. <laughs> so one of the things that I noticed because I'm a jazz head, so I was like mm. the Nolius Monk, Duke Ellington. I think was one of the ones that I saw. Early the original on. ones, yeah. Original ones. Remember that? And I was yeah. like, oh man, he's he's my boy. I need to connect with him. He's, he's yeah, jazz, jazz is the like best, me. man. Yeah, it's like a good, and it's also like I'm a tech guy too, so it's a good counterbalance to the to the uh, to the tech stuff. Like Duke is such a like a, a <sighs> elegant on, dude, man. man. Like I was, you know, it's funny. I was listening to a. Um, it was uh, somebody was redoing the the A train that you know that song the take the A train oh yeah and it was um some other guy and it was like all going all over the place and I was like man like Duke's Duke's better than like his his stuff is like simple and elegant and uh, so if if you guys aren't jazz fans check it out because it's a I love the art of jazz and for the jazz heads out there watching and listening there's a great documentary i'm going to add this Stephen, if you watch this uh it's a documentary by ken burns on oh PBS. i know what you're talking about of course yeah on the history of jazz yeah like that Highly... seven or eight seven or eight episode or i think it's nine <sighs> it's, That's it's, a... it's a long one yeah it's a long one i love watching that I, i've i probably watched that three or four times oh man so good so good just the evolution of jazz and just this influence on american co of the world you know culture. i wish there was more of those like i could just consume those all day endlessly <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, so we definitely bonded when I saw that. I was like, ah, we, we got to get Steven on. And plus, everything that you're doing, man, with the content creation, obviously watching your journey. I remember when you first started the YouTube channel, and I started when it was a baby channel, and now it's grown over, a, you know, 1,000K, right? 1,000 subscribers. 2, now. Two I got 20, 20, almost 2,200 now. I remember back when you had like 100 subs, man. And now just to see it. just and those were all just people that, like, I begged to, to sign up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, the, that, that was your crew, right? That was like that's the how every channel starts, right? Like, <laughs> please, please go subscribe to my please channel. Please subscribe. Please, you're my student. Please. Yeah, I remember that. And we met, you know, I'll mention this. I took one of your uh, TikTok master classes, and that's how you and I connected. And since then, I was, uh, you inspired me to get on TikTok, did it, fell off the wagon. And, and we'll talk a little bit about kind of some of the challenges that a lot of creators deal with in yeah. regards to burnout. But man, just seeing your journey, brother, and just seeing it grow. And you're just a machine, man, which is the reason why we have you on the creator factor. So before we get into the content creation talk, let's take it back. Take it back in the days, back to the younger days of Stephen Pope. You know, was there a moment, Stephen, where you can look back and say, ah, yes, that that was the creator in me. That's the creative moment. You mean in terms of like even my young years or like when I like yeah. got into content creation? Well, I mean, I've always been a builder. Like mm. first and foremost, problem solver, builder. I've loved creating products and trying to get people to buy them. Like, so I think the entrepreneur has always been in me and, uh, you know, lemonade stand and selling Cokes at 4th of July and all that kind of stuff. And you did all those things. Then. Yeah, I did all those things and um, pretty much have always been on my own. So I've had a W2 job like two or three years of my entire life. So, you know, scrapping to build stuff and get people to buy it and, working with entrepreneurs i've always loved working with entrepreneurs both from like the service providers people that sell like their services consulting coaches and then also like with startups like building them technology and, so um, yeah yeah you speaking of technology and just doing the you know starting the company 
you know, you sold a seven figure tech company. Um, talk to us a little bit about what was the inspiration behind that decision to sell and ultimately kind of put you on this path as a, as a content creator entrepreneur. Yeah. So after I graduated college, I, you know, I, I started that company and I was just doing good work for people and, and built that up over the years. And uh, ultimately, I think the reason there, there was a really a, like a couple of different factors that, that, you know, that I ended up selling it. Number one, I, w- I just wasn't that passionate about what I was doing anymore. I, I got a little tired of like creating custom technology for people all the time. And I also kind of saw the writing on the wall of like where that industry is going. It's changing a lot. Like getting people to help you build technology is it's a worldwide like, you know, there's a lot of competition worldwide in that space. And it's not that you can't make money in it. It's just that, uh, you know, I, I didn't like where it was going. And so uh, I ended up selling it. And um, and, and and that's really it. It's like and then uh, it was really after that where I was like starting over from scratch. It was it was cool to sell a company. Um, but there's a lot that gets wrapped up in that. Like that was my entire identity for a long time. How many years really, were you part of this? Uh, yeah, like twelve years. Oh, I twelve years. Okay, so over a decade. Yeah. Okay. And um, and I built it mostly off of like thought leadership content, blogging, and then just doing good work for people. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was creating back then. Like I've always been a creator, but it wasn't um, it it wasn't with the marketing mindset. Like I didn't understand marketing so to speak like i didn't know how, like video and social media and like crafting messages and crafting internet offers and all that kind of stuff and it was when i sold that company that i really started to think of myself as a as what a lot of people think of as a creator now which is like create content online build a business from it because i was like well that that business was great but it took seven or it took like i said I, I built that over 12 years i was older now um i had made a lot of money from that but i wasn't like it wasn't like F you money. I wasn't going to just be able to not do anything forever. And so I had to kind of decide like, how am I going to do this? And I wanted something that could, I, I needed to learn how to do what I did a lot faster. And that's when I really saw video, social media. I didn't know how it all worked. I saw people like Gary Vee talking about it. Who ended Who's up that being, guy? Who's that guy? Yeah. That's who ended up being an inspiration for like, how do you do the, all of this content at scale? Yeah. Um, so I, I had to figure it out and I just started stumbling through it and I took some courses for myself to get on video and get help. And, um, but that's kind of like how it all kind of started. So is it safe to say that content was your first introduction to understanding marketing, like that content marketing style? I think so. Like in messaging and like, mm-hmm. like I started realizing, Oh, like headlines. Mm-hmm. I, I got really fascinated with the fact that you could, craft messages and write things in a certain way and like make them more valuable just by writing them differently right like by articulating yourself really well and articulating this transformation someone could go through i was like oh that's really interesting that like just by like you could like something whatever it is you can sell it for more if you sit if you talk about it the right way and you could just get online and talk about things and sell things i thought that was really fascinating because I hadn't seen it that way before. I think understanding that I always say that copy, understanding, learning copy is it's it's the holy grail of marketing, right? And I think one of the things that I've noticed about your content creation process is that you're very contextual. And I think oftentimes creators I see a lot um, who are just creating content without a real strategy, without having context. And they're just kind of spraying and praying right. without realizing that. Do you see that as well? I do, but it's, I think it's also partly, and I, I've noticed I've, I've over the, the time I've done this, I've started to realize why things like this happen. I think part of the reason why that happens is because people don't really have a product yet. They don't really mm. know what they're doing. So it translates through to the content that they're creating. It's just, I used to do some of that too. Like I would create these posts and like they were inspirational posts and like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this is how I did this. And, and, and they get a good reaction, but they don't, make you money um and it was really once i started like getting serious about the systems and like creating those things and people really started to attach to that they were like oh i saw your system that was cool i saw your system i saw your system they kept saying that and i was like oh okay i'm really getting it and then i kind of stopped doing all of the random stuff because and it's okay it's natural but like i did find that like 
you can get distracted by seeing what other people are doing and you see their post that goes wild because they do some inspirational post but they weren't they weren't translating into money they were just getting like people being like oh yeah that's cool like good job you know and there's yeah. a big difference between inspiring people and then making money that's absolutely i think that understanding that difference um is is when you look at it from a different lens, it changes the perspective and how you create the content. Let's get into something because as creatives, man, not all of us, Stephen, are blessed with the engineering brain that you have, sir. Um, <laughs> let's let's talk about, you know, because uh, obviously, you know, you come from that tech background. And I think that became obviously your superpower to really put frameworks and systems and processes around content creation, which is the reason why the man behind scaling, repurposing the content, you know, how for creatives that are not wired that way how can we start training ourselves to think more workflow automation process towards our content creation process yeah first you got to get creating right so you have to actually have a workflow to automate and like to systematize so i think like you know sometimes people come to me really early and they're like oh i saw your content engine database it looks so cool and and i'm like have you have you recorded a video yet and they're like no and I'm like, well, like this is going to get you way distracted, right? Like the, you're going to be like in the weeds of technology. So like you do have to start to create and kind of like connect the dots and go down the path a bit. Otherwise, there's nothing to automate. There's nothing to create a workflow around, right? And so like a lot of the time, it's just being aware of where you are in the journey, right? Because if uh, you, like sometimes the initial hurdles are just creating the video, being confident to look at the, the camera craft a message, craft a product, make a dollar from the video that you're creating, right? So like, that's kind of the first goal. Like I really try to get people focused on that. You want to be able to, to create a video and make a dollar from it mm. or, or hopefully a lot more than a dollar, but you get the point. Like it has to make up some money. You don't need a big complex workflow to do that. You need a compelling message and a compelling product. And so, you know, you know, focusing on that first is probably where you want to, you want to, and then like, then all you have to do is it's very simple. Like you're, you're, you're creating this content. What's really the pain point organization, you know, mm -hmm. so you've got the, so just some of that basic stuff, like having a list of, okay, I'm going to create these folders in this order. Mm -hmm. I'm going to name them this. I'm going to make sure mm -hmm. I link back to it. You know, so I've automated that whole thing, but like even just having a list. So like, like I've way over complicated things in the, like even for myself, that's just part of the, but so like just being aware and not overcomplicating it, making simple lists of things you're doing. Yeah, you, it, you, it could be that easy. You, well, you hit it right there, my man, because I was thinking of like, I know recently, you know, as a creative, I was just all over the place. And, you, you, you know, I'm sure creators listening and watching, you can relate. It's like Google folders here, there. It's like documents. Some documents are not even <laughs> labeled. You know what I'm talking about. I'm sure yeah. you've seen the mess. Um, and I've discovered, Stephen, even just like watching you. And when I used to watch your content, I'm like, man, this is pretty robust. It's pretty complicated. And my right. brain is thinking, okay, now I got to spend a lot of time learning this. But what I've discovered right, right. is for creators out there who, you know, have a hard time processing and, and organizing this, start with like documenting, making like, like Steven said, a, a yeah. checklist, even a something checklist, simple, yeah. right? Just yeah. documenting the process to, to make sure that um, you're just, you know, being more efficient with the workflow. I think it's been super helpful in my journey, man. It's also been helpful for me to get people's feedback because I, I like I have a really complicated system. It's for like if you're creating a ton of content, you have a team and you know, so like there's that system. But then I, I just released a new one that's like bare bones, as simple as it can be. And just just the, the main things you need. It's just like, how do you work with your editor? Beautiful. How do you keep track of the files? How do you create mm. the baseline folder? How do you publish it? That's all you need two zaps, two little automations that make that whole thing happen. Oh, and so I'm kind of, I'm kind of excited about oh, yeah. that too. Cause I think I'm going to try to keep away from getting down that. I'm going to basically have two. That's like, this is the extreme. And I I'm, I'm thinking of like renaming. It should be the content database extreme, like extreme. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that people really get the, the idea that this is an extreme kind of thing that we're going down here. And then just like super simple. Like how do we just do the basics and keep track of everything? Cause that's the, that, that's the main, out of all the benefits, like just being organized is probably the most beneficial thing that I've ever done with any of the automations. So you have the strategy, you have the content creation framework, the process, and then this allows uh, creators to 
really scale and repurpose and do things with their content to really maximize their output and efficiency. So let's get to you, your take on this, man. Like, why do you feel scaling and repurposing your content now more than ever uh, matters for, for content creators? Well, once you have something that's working and gets you money, like it's like, I will say, like, I have noticed like volume matters, you know, it does. So the more content that I create at this point, the more money I make, the more, the like, even though I'm only really trying to grow on TikTok and YouTube, because mm -hmm. I publish on Twitter, be, because I publish here, there and everywhere else, people just are seeing me on a regular basis. And uh, so the thing is, is that somebody might find you on TikTok or YouTube, but that might not be where they hang out. They might be on LinkedIn. They might be on Instagram. So what I what I've realized is that there's this concept of like where you're trying to grow, like you're following. And that's where you're getting good at the platforms. Like how does TikTok work? How does YouTube work? But then there's networking, the, the, the concept of networking and being omni, omnipresent. Now, it doesn't mean I'm trying, I'm not trying to grow on Instagram. Like I'm not trying to grow on Twitter, but I'm there. And when people cross your path, subconsciously, these things like they increase your credibility. Like, the, man, like the, man, this guy's everywhere. He's like when they see you, like when they see your content on one platform and then they see it on another it just adds to the credibility. And so, and plus the volume needs to be there, right? So like uh, people don't really log onto these platforms necessarily all that much. Like me and you might, because this is what we do, but other people aren't. And so if you're putting stuff out on a daily basis, you have a much higher chance of being seen and being noticed. And especially if that content is also uh, well done and, you know, gives a, gives value, then it's just going to work better. I mean, that's just the bottom line. You're going to get more impressions, more views. Like I, I don't like, I'm not one of those people that's trying to go viral all the time or worried about views, but I do know they matter. It matters. Well, I've noticed your output, man. I mean, you're again, as I mentioned in the intro, you're like one of the hardest working content creators that I know, Steven. I mean, you're always putting out great content on TikTok. Uh, super valuable content. We'll make sure, guys, that we post it up in our show notes. Uh, very valuable. You talk about, you know, uh, repurposing and scaling, and, and you really kind of take it behind the scenes uh, on your process and how we can be more efficient as content creators. So what I'm hearing, I just want to be clear, is that for content creators, Stephen, that are saying, hey, um, I see the repurposing, right? I see that you're everywhere. But at the end of the day, man, you're focusing on maybe one to two platforms, right? TikTok and YouTube. And right. then you're repurposing it, right? Because I think a lot of content creators, and I'm asking this, brother, because I think content creators feel like I need to be everywhere. And that could be daunting for some creator to be like, damn, I don't have a team, you know? Um, so anyways, and I, it's daunting for that. me. It's it's still stressful for me sometimes too. So like, I like to say that as well. Um, but yeah, th that is key, right? So like, these are only things that I've learned from experience. Like, you don't have to be everywhere. Like, you, you got to focus on making really good content first and foremost the the scaling and the quantity does help on that front too because the more content you create the better you're going to get at it you're going to get better at it faster um but at the end of the day it's the good content that's going to convert into clients mm. so like if you have garbage uh I, you know if you if you have garbage in and then you have garbage out all over the place right so like you got to keep focused on that and it, it it is a kind of an interesting dynamic that might seem odd for me because I'm always talking about automation and scaling. And so like, but I still like, it has to be good. Like sometimes people will comment on my stuff and be like, Oh, it's, it's not about quantity. It's about quality. And it's like, I, I agree. Like check out my other three videos that are talking about <laughs> that. Not just the one where I'm talking about how I do a million videos a day. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, you mentioned about, I want to touch on something about you, you're being, you being such a high volume content creator you know, big topic for content creators, even I was dealing with this a few months ago, and it took me a minute just to kind of get back into the swing of things is creator burnout, you know, mm -hmm. as a vol high volume content creator, brother, how, how do you deal with with creator burnout? Yeah, and I've, I've been burned out a couple of different times. I mean, every now and again, um, well, number one, I, I will say this is like, I'm really committed, I really believe that this stuff works. And, and I'm also really committed so those two things help me through the that burnout phase because like 
like when I do get burned out, you know, it's like I fall back on some of these things. You know, there was a couple, uh, like a couple of months back where I was going through some adjustments and I just stopped posting on LinkedIn for a couple of weeks. I could have done it. Like it wouldn't have taken that much more effort, but I was just like, you know what? I'll swing back. Um, I was going, you know, and so I guess you just have to have some awareness and some patience with yourself and um, some underlying, and then like knowing where your focus actually is. Right. So um, yeah. I think that's the key, right? Awareness. So there's no, there's no nice. silver bullet. Like I think I get, you got to be aware of what's going on so that you can dial in what's going on what, and address what's happening. I think that is actually probably the key. It's just like awareness that I, you're even going through it. No, absolutely. You know, you said a couple of things that really landed with me. Number one is obviously, you know, for creators out there, if you're feeling, you know, creative, creator burnout is, you know, giving yourself space and grace, right? Giving yourself permission to even pull back. Um, and also, I, I love the idea what you just said about revisiting the strategy, if you want to call it your why, but really, re you know, looking back at, as you said, you went back to say, hey, I may be feeling burned out and that's okay. I'm going to step back a bit, but I need to get back to it. Why? Because this works. This is part of my business and this is part of what I'm, you know, doing here. So I, I mean, it is part of my that. core business too. Like that's right. You know, you know, like so and, like how can the the, the 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 content scaling guy has to keep scaling, right? Right. Uh, right. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. If that's not exactly. what you do, then maybe that's not exactly, you know. So that, I feel like that's a core commitment from my point of view. Like which is the reason to work through that, which is the reason why I have you on, Stephen, because for our audience, our audience is creator entrepreneurs. We have creator educators. So these are creators that are not just on TikTok dancing or they're not, you know, the entertainment style creators. These right, are content yeah, yeah. creators, our people, man, who are people who are our coaches, right. consultants, uh, right. you know, creating online courses. So this is important to understand that again, revisiting that strategy, right, of why you're doing this and it works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And it, I think it's also going to get more intense like over time. Like, so like mm. developing these skills, like, like I think this is only going to get more, like it's, it's only going to become more important. And so like, I'm still, I'm also thinking about that. I'm like, man, like this is, this is a core skill to have in this day and age to create content, to create your own little media company to, you know, learn how to distribute content, learn how to effectively like every, every week I get better at making video. It doesn't mean that every video is better, but I like subconsciously I'm learning these little things. Like I'll see a video that kind of falls off. I'll be like, Oh, you know what? I shouldn't, I shouldn't do it like that. Like if I cut all that out, you know, like the message is cause I'm pretty direct into the point. And so like, I'm learning more and more how you can condense that message in this real simple way. Like that's the best messaging. It's like simple, clear, like one. And you're great at that. One simple thing. Yeah. A lot of times people get on there and part of the reason why they have a hard time making a video is because they try <laughs> to put 10 videos into one video. Ah. Uh, you know, they're like they're trying to hit all these different pain points. And then by the time like so somebody's like, I could get overwhelming. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, I don't even know what you're talking I wonder about. why you're burned out. Like, I'm out of here. <laughs> So it's like simplifying the message can give you a lot more messages to say, you know? So I love that. Yeah. Right there. yeah it's just Boom. important, you know, like um, to be able to communicate yourself. Yes. It, it, yeah. You were touching on the importance of moving forward for creators, the importance of really putting out more content and figuring out ways to develop skill sets. Uh I'm I'm curious to know, man. I think this is gonna obviously change the game, and I know you're with me on this. But share with us your hot take on on AI and how is that going to impact content creator entrepreneurs moving forward? Yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of it actually. Like, um, and just like using it in the most practical ways. So, like as a podcast guy, right? You can appreciate this. It's like podcast clips are awesome, right? Like you go in and you create those little clips, and those you got those video clips. For whatever reason on online like being able to start those clips and end those clips in random spots as long as you're good at cutting that can work really well right you can give people the context you can give them value but like if you just were to take that transcript and start it in a random spot and end it in a random spot and you try to post that as a post it's gonna it's gonna be way weird somebody's gonna be like it's not gonna make any sense whatsoever right uh but with ai what i did was i started just 
I would take my video clips, I would throw them, get them transcribed. So now I've got the, the words and then I would just take them and throw them to chat GPT. And I would say, Hey, rewrite this into something that's re that's, that's legible. And then it spits it back out to me and then I can go in and make some final tweaks to it. And then I can post that. That saves me a ton of time. I'm also dyslexic. So writing in general, processing that, doing what I just talked about, like on my own, like takes my brain a lot of mental space. But doing that little thing, like that's one of those practical things. And I, I'm seeing like all sorts of opportunities. So I'm not one of those people that's like doomsday, like it's going to take over my job or anything. And I'm not on the other, I'm not on the other side where it's like, it's going to do everything for us. So I'm just like, this is how I've always been. I'm right in the middle. I'm like, oh, this is an opportunity. Mm. I'm going to use it. And I'm not going to use it in such a way that it dilutes me. Right. Because mm. there's a lot of people out there that are like, I can tell when you're using AI and it's diluted. Right. It's it's not good. And I'm like, well, yeah, if you just use it like that, then it's not going to be good. But like, there's always these like middle grounds where you can like connect these dots and like use them. And like, I, I, I promise you that AI is going to be a big deal and you should learn how to use it. It doesn't have to be something you're afraid of. And it can be very useful very quickly, but just, you got to use it practically. And that's, that's the bottom line. Practically. And I think one of the things that, and I completely agree with everything you just said. One of the things that I'm noticing, obviously the bigger argument is, you know, is it going to take the human element? And I think that <laughs> I always tell these individuals, I'm like, Hey, listen, I said, if you're going to copy and paste then, and you're not using your brain or creativity, then you can complain yeah. all you want that, but that's on you. It's like, you're using it as a tool. And I think there's a difference between looking at all these tools, whether it's, you know, StreamYard or the Descript or all these tools that we use as right. content creators, they're tools. And AI is simply going to be a tool that could be super helpful to maximize, to repurpose, and to do all the things that we want to do as creators, right? Yeah, you, just... could do, you could use Descript in a bad way too, you know, like, exactly. Um, I think people just, I, like, I think all of those things just ultimately come from like a, some little, some fear of some fear. sort, mm -hmm. you know, like, I'm just going to destroy it because <laughs> like somebody could, somebody couldn't just thoughtfully use it. No, it's like, it's, it's going to ruin everything because you just, you didn't put any thought into it. No, 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 it's like, put some thought into it yeah, and, and just do it thoughtfully. That is one part like that. That is the most important thing about all of this, right? Like sometimes people come to me, like they, they love my systems mm. and I'm like, you know what? Like systems can't just, they can't replace just being thoughtful. Like you can't systemize things so much that like there's no more thought involved. So, so sometimes like you just have to have a thoughtful moment where you sit down and you come up with good ideas and you look at comments and you, you do some of these things and you interact with people. There's no system for everything. Like, right. and systems are only as good as like the people that run them anyway. So like, just, you gotta be thoughtful with all of this stuff. And like, the more you try to optimize and the more, sometimes those things just keep you from being thoughtful because sometimes people are using systems and all that stuff to, to pack more things in, right? In the same amount of time. And that's not always, the best plan of action. So it's just all about being thoughtful with all this. Do you ever think about or get bored with sometimes the, the content that you create and say, Hey, this is, this is too repetitive. Uh, this, this content is just, you know, on, on a hamster wheel. Do you ever feel like, you know, you need to go ahead I and used, take it a different direction? Yeah. I used to in the beginning, but that was when I didn't know that people cared about certain things I talked about. So I, I like, so I used to be more worried about that when I didn't know what to talk about. So mm. I, so I would just, I would be like, Oh, I can't talk about that. I just talked about it. Now that I, I know that people kind of like me for my systems and my automation and like, I just doubled down and I talk about it more. I, I, I used to be like, Oh, I just talked about that three days ago. Now I just post it again. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I know, first of all, nobody's paying that much attention and nobody's like, I'm not Joe Rogan. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so I have some self-awareness around these things. Like, I know people are not watching all of my videos. So actually, no, like it's the opposite. I'm kind of leaning into the more repetitive it is, the better it works. Cause the I really get known as something. And That's I can right. always I know that I can expand later. And uh so uh so no, and then at the same time, I'm always innovating, right? So I'm always like I have a whole new like content machine that I built out. I haven't released it yet. And it's like insane. It's like the most abstracted thing that I've ever built. And it's going to use AI and be super flexible. Um, it's not going to be simple, <laughs> right. 
Mm. But it's going to be really cool. And so like I'm using that and I'm building that. And so I'm, I, I use that in my content. So a repeti- repetition mixed with a little bit of innovation, I think is a good combination. And, and it's actually really, it feels really good to just be like, not caring like what people, well, first of all, nobody actually is judging your content. Only you are. Mm. So it feels pretty good to just be like, no, I'm going to just keep pumping out the same stuff and not have that worry that I used to have. Cause that, cause here's the thing is like, when you have that worry that it's too repetitive, you start pushing out stuff that's truly random. I was actually thinking, it was funny before this interview, I was thinking about some of the random stuff I used to post on LinkedIn because I was just afraid that I just talked about that. And so you would insert these, Oh, random picture of me with my kid or, or doing this or that. And it's not that you can't post with your kids, but like that stuff's not, um, it, it, it makes you a little relatable here and there. I'm not saying you can't share those mm-hmm. things, but like people don't really care about you and your, your kids or anything. And it's like, it's like, a, it's like a scapegoat because you just don't have something else to say, you know? Um, and I'm saying these things with like, there's no real rule, but like, from my understanding, like as I've developed, it's like, I used to put out some really random stuff just because I was afraid of pushing out something that I recently pushed out. And I think that's a bigger mistake actually, especially if you're small, right? Like if if you're, if you're a huge brand like Joe Rogan, you can talk about all these different things and people will just come to you because they see your face and they'll be like, Oh, I'll listen. But if people don't know who you are, like it's really hard to grow a brand unless you're something, unless you have something unique point of view on things. Like I I see lots of people that even have very successful businesses, like they have $10 million, $20 million businesses. And they're talking about general branding advice and like just stuff that's like, you know, like it's interesting and, and good information, but pretty general. And like, if you, if you haven't had some major exit, like Alex Hermosi and like, where Mm -hmm. it's just like this crazy result that you had, like, People don't care about that general stuff. So the more you can niche into something really specific, like I'm the content automation guy. Mm-hmm. That's, you own that. That's, you own that. I yeah. own that space. Yeah. And, I, and that's the reason. It's interesting you say this, Stephen. Allow me to interject this because I was looking at like um, when I look and, and this is great for any creators out there that are looking to get on podcasts. This is, this is some advice here, guys, is that. If you're looking to be invited on a show, the likelihood of you getting a yes from a podcaster is if you have a specialized skill set or know a specific topic so well that nobody else is talking about it or you have a unique angle. Right. So right. I think it's important for uh, for podcasts. For example, for Steven, I reached out to him because when I'm when I reach out to my guests, I strategically figure out what is their superpower and can that specific superpower help creators? It's a yes, hell yes. And then Stephen came on and voila, we're talking about content creation, scaling, repurposing, because that's what he's right. known for. So and you might even, on that, Stephen. And you might even be interested in talking more about it. Like you might be interested in learning a little bit more about like, what could I take away from this? Because I get those emails all the time where it's like, somebody's like, <clears throat> I haven't run a podcast in a while. I'm going to relaunch one soon. But people reach out and be like, hey, okay. like, so-and-so would love to be on your show. He, he could talk about his book. And, and I'm like, like, I, it I just get those is, all the time. <laughs> it's instantly delete. Like, I'm not going to, yeah. I'm not even going to entertain that. So yeah, like, um, you, like if you want to get booked on a podcast, putting out like, rel- like niche content is the best way to do it. Cause you're going to have people that reach out to you and are like, Hey, we'd really love to have you on the show. And let's talk about these things that you're talking about. It's way easier. Like I, I get booked at least once a week, just indefinitely. Makes a great way for me to make content. I'm recording this too, off to the side. I got a camera, um, and I can make content from it. It's been one of the that's, easiest. That's ways a great to... tip, by the way, guys. That's a great tip. Take that. <laughs> Record yeah, yourself because, while yeah, you're doing it, a podcast. Yeah, here's another like interesting thing about podcasting. So I think the best podcasts are like ones like yours, where you're engaged and it's about what you're you're doing. But sometimes people create those podcasts just to create clips and that's kind of that could be a real dicey situation because like if you're not doing some of the talking it's going to be hard getting clips of you talking (laughs) you know right but if you're on podcasts the people are asking you questions they're fielding questions and so you have an opportunity to talk about things and and what's interesting about that too is that 
for whatever reason, like if you sit down in front of a camera and you you give a direct message, uh, it's harder it's harder to keep talking about the same things. But if a if a podcaster asks you a question, you're going to answer the answer these things in slightly different like angles and different because it's gonna the question is going to be slightly off. So that's how you can be really repetitive with your message, without it being like without you feeling like it's repetitive, because like. There's so many rules that we put on ourselves that are they're really kind of fake. I actually did a, pod, a video about this earlier. It's like we, we put these false rules on ourselves. Mm. But when somebody's asking you the question, for whatever reason, it doesn't. It feels justified because you asked me, right? So you so people must want to know. Speak on, you know, for for the content creator who's listening or watching or both these days. Uh, they're looking to say, hey, listen, I, I'm, a, I'm a content creator, entrepreneur. I'm looking to create content. Um, what, what's like a baseline strategy? What's a piece of advice you can give to that early stage content creator, Stephen, that is looking to build content that's going to actually engage versus just spraying and praying? Yeah, I think, I think being passionate about something, innovating, small amounts, mm. like synthesizing something, right? So go solve a small little problem and then talk about how you did it. It could be a small little thing, right? It could just be like you spent an hour figuring something out. Synthesize that down and articulate why it's important, right? Because here, here's, a, here's a good tip is like people don't really care about how to information in the most cases. Like most people just want their problem solved. Like they would much rather not hire you, right? They would much rather be watching Netflix and just the problem disappears. So learn to articulate the gap that you're closing and why it's important. That's more important than the how-to information. And then synthesize that how-to information in such a way that that if someone wants it, they can get a hold of it. But the articulation of the problem, where people want to be, their desires, and like how far, like your ability to to articulate that gap is going to be where the value is, right? That's the true value is the articulation of the gap, not mm. so much solving the gap, right? Because then it's like a rubber band. The more you stretch that rubber band out, the more valuable the information becomes because you've really made it clear to somebody why this is really important. So I think learning, synthesizing, getting good at articulating, and that's going to be the, the, where the gold is. And it, it's funny because I talk about this a lot. I, I always talk about this wow statement that that I always I always think about the wow statement. It's like, how do you make someone feel like they got five bucks or more, or like how do you give them a secret weapon that they that they feel that, that their competitors don't have, so that when they watch your content, they really say, "Wow, I'm glad I saw that." Mm -hmm. You want them you want them to feel like now that I have this information, I can do this and I feel better. So there's all these tricks, but getting good at that is probably the most important thing, you know, and focusing uh, on the, focusing on the transformation, right? Yeah, focusing on ultimately delivering yeah. result. And the, and the, what's the physical and the emotional benefit, right? right. So like, right. like I always pick on CPAs because they make the most boring content <laughs> and it's always like, Oh, how do you form an S corp? How do Facts. you do this? Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, eh, you know, like why don't, why don't they talk about how the, they, they were, somebody wasn't able to sleep tonight because they were, they were, afraid of payroll and like, how can they really address that? That emotional. Yeah. It's going to be way more room. effective. And like the fact that the, that you even know that, that, that if you, if you create this emotional fire in mm -hmm. someone's, cause even when I said that to myself, I was like, man, I've done, I've had that so many times. Right. And I got like an emotional thing and I'm not really a super emotional guy on the surface. So like being able to do that is going to be, and not in a way that's like, poking them in the eye where they they're annoyed with you but just oh this guy really gets it and he can help me solve it you know i want to touch on something before we we talk about repurposing a bit steven you know one of the things that you said is articulation and i want to go ahead and, and highlight that a bit for for our creators watching and listening the importance of articulation which is really not talked about a lot you know the import this is the reason why i feel like you know, from all the reasons, the benefits of starting a podcast, one of the things that I love about this platform is the practice 
of communication. And articulation comes through the practice of speaking, sharing. And the more and more you practice uh, right, yeah. what you are trying to communicate and help other people do, the better you get at the articulation. So uh, that's the reason why I, I believe that Stephen is, is great at content creation. I think I believe that the content creation, the volume, the practice being, being behind the mic in front of the camera. Creators, if you're creating content, the more and more you create content, the, the underlying, the underrated skill set that you're going to learn is the skill set of articulation. And that comes with practice, which is the reason why, Stephen, I love doing what we're doing here, because we're figuring out new ways to articulate what we're trying to help other creators. You feel me? That's, yeah, you got to go deep on that. Yeah. Like every time I, I make a podcast clip, like so, I, and this is why people get lost with my message sometimes, and that's okay. But when I create a podcast clip, I have that wow statement in my brain. I'm like, I got to cut this at the right spot. I got, if I cut this off and I'm just meandering around, like people are going to scroll away. So like that wow factor has to be at the cornerstone of everything you do. Now you're going to hit and miss. And so you give yourself grace on all that. Like, I know I'm going to write it the wrong way. I'm going to make a crappy image. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But I'm always getting pulled back to that, that wow statement. And it's funny because when I work with clients, that's the thing they always skip. They I say, hey, write this out, write the wow statement out, like literally write it out. And they always, they never do. And I'm always like, you didn't do it. And then I say, why isn't my video working? And I said, you didn't do this. I said, you did do, I told you to write that out. It takes time, right? Like it takes time to articulate yourself. People always want to make things super general. It's like, yeah, the more general you make it, the, the weaker it's going to be. It's general. It's like, like you can say, you know, you'll feel better if you, you can say, you'll feel better if you t address this. You can say, oh, you'll sleep better at night if you address this. So it's like, I just mm -hmm. went a little bit deeper and there's, you can go deeper and deeper and deeper on the, the specificity of what you're talking about. And the more you do, the more it's going to actually resonate because, you know, people were bombarded with, with general information. So creators out there, that, that's, some, that's a gold, golden advice is just being able to tweak you know, and figuring out what is instead of just teaching somebody just for the sake of just teaching or being general, really think about the emotional connection, the mental connection, the transformation and tying that in versus just saying, hey, this is going to help you do this. You got you yeah, to like, figure out angles here. Get creative with it, right? <laughs> yeah, like giving people three tips and the yeah. 10 tips to do this and that. That's going to fly over a lot of people's heads because some people don't even know that they need that. Like if I was, if I went out there every day and I talked about, oh, you should have a media company within your business, blah, 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 blah. True. But like how many people are really like waking up and thinking, oh, I need to build a media company today. Like, you know what I mean? It's just going to fly over so many people's heads. So you got to talk way more in the weeds mm. with like specific, specific things. And mm -hmm. like, I like, and you don't know. And here's another secret too, is that like, you don't always know what those things are as well. Right. So when I, created a lot of content in the beginning. I didn't really know what was going to resonate with people. It was only like showing people all of my systems and scaling stuff. It was a pure accident. So this is actually a, a great, it's, it's genius in a way, right? Like uh, I just, I, I, I actually just had fun building it. And I was like, Hey, and I just took screenshots with my phone. I was like, Hey, check out this cool Airtable database. Wasn't even selling it. And then people were like, Oh, I saw your system. I saw your system. I saw your system. And then here's even I like a more, yeah. And then here's a, even a more nuanced thing though. Right. So I would get on the call and I would say, Oh, you want my system? And I would start selling the system and they were like, Oh, I didn't mean that system. So then I went down then I was like, Oh, what do you mean by system? Cause some people wanted a system to create. Some people wanted a system to organize. So like you have to go really deep on like the really specific things that people are really want before it's really going to work, right? Because everyone's out there like, I'm going to help you make more money. But like, what's, what are the specifics that's keeping that person, that particular person from doing it? And it's those words that are actually going to make a meaningful impact on that person then versus like, I'm going to help you make a lot of money because there's so much noise around that topic. And there's a, a true pain point, a true limiter for a wide variety of people that's all different. That's actually why they're not making the money. And so you have to hit those like little pain points. And so when you think about coming up with 
like a niche and stuff. It's not so much as it, is it a CEO or is it a, a this or a that? Like th it's not their title. It's what is the specific problem that that type of person is suffering from? And, and so like, in, so instead of thinking about niches as industries or titles, it's more about what are they suffering from? And, and getting to the bottom of those things is going to be how you like you unlock this whole thing. Pause right there. See, I, I love that. Cause this, this is where my, my mind was going when you said it's not about like, you know, the, the titles, but it's about their pain points. And I love that. Cause I know, obviously I know you're aware of there's this exercise of your ideal listener or your perfect avatar. And I feel right. like you kind of flipped a little bit and saying, okay, it's just not one avatar. Cause that's basically what we, you know, in the entrepreneurial world, they would say, Oh, you know, have this one avatar, but I always challenge that with what you just said right there in that as creators, we got to start thinking about not so much as titles like this individual, because every individual is going to have a different need, but to right. really figure out what are the multiple pain points and then being able to speak on that, to be able to create content around. I think that right there is what we got to think about. Yeah. And let me articulate that even more too. Right. So like, like what I started to learn was like, oh, people wanted a system. They wanted a system. And why do they want a system? Oh, it was because it would save them time. It would streamline things, right? But it goes even deeper though, because like think of a busy CEO, like you might have the perfect system for him, but are you going to do the work for him? Because he, he, like I can give him the system, but if he doesn't use it, he doesn't implement it, then it's not going to, it's not going to be valuable. So like, when people are really busy, sometimes those types of busy people, they just want the work done for them. So I don't want to do the work for them. But then I realized, oh, but if I if, if I came up hmm. with a, a like a, a, a course, not for him, but that he could take to one of his staff and say, hey, this guy, Steve, he's created this whole course. You can take this course and you can build out everything for me. And so like, so you, you see what I'm saying here? It's like a busy CEO, like they want a system and they want to save time, but they don't want to do the work. They don't want right. to take a course. They don't want to, they don't want to record a video. They don't want to do any of those things. So how do you like keep digging and create a solution that's going to work for that person? Right. Cause I don't now the, the, the flip side is like, I don't want to do the work for him, but I right. can create a whole course that he could then go and hire somebody or just give it to a, an existing staff member. And he could feel confident that if, if he, if you, if he gives it to him, that person will have the skills and will be able to, maybe with a little bit of my guidance, we'll be able to put all these things together. Now there I, are I, other, I love that. Now there are other creators that would, they can't hire somebody. So right. they do want the how-to information. They do want the system to make it faster. But like, see how many little nuances you have to go through to like- Understanding the market, right? Understanding to truly who. get something that's going to yeah. work. Because mm -hmm. here's the other thing too, is like, you, like, we talk about marketing messages, all this stuff. It's none of that's going to matter if like your product sucks. Period. Like that's how you get off the ground. Like, but in the end, like your the best marketing messages, they just actually just kind of come from direct knowledge of what like the the customer really wants. And so, like everyone's focused on that huge transformation, like ten x. I'm going to ten x your income. I'm going to do this. <laughs> it's all like it's all really it's all bullshit, really. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, like smaller outcomes are actually more valuable because they're more realistic Yeah, when they're tied to like a mechanism that like actually seems like, oh, this, this is truly, a, this is truly addressing the issue I have. So like, I'm going to help you get more clients by giving you a roadmap that one of your employees can follow and help you through it with a little bit of my guidance. Now, I would never have known to think of that only through experience of helping a CEO he thought he wanted my solution, but it didn't work because he was just too busy and I didn't want to do the work for him. And so I was like, oh, like, what if I just teach one of your employees exactly how to do it? And then and then all these things kind of like unfold. But I, I could never have thought of that ahead of time. What, you know, and, and I'm, I'm thinking about people don't want to, some people do, right? Depending on your market. But it's not about information anymore. It's about application, right? Application over information. And I think that's yeah, what the, the are. Yeah, because like, the information is everywhere. It's, it's like, out there. It's out there. Yeah. Right? But the application of it. And again, it may not be you, creator, listening or watching, but it may be somebody else that wants to do it. But at the end of the day, that busy CEO, that high level, the one that's going to pay you the big, big bucks, 
um, they don't want the information. They really don't want the course. They're just like, hey, I've they don't even, they don't even like want that. to talk. Like, they don't even do want it. to talk to you. Right. Yeah. Just like and, make it happen. And here's something a interesting Z too. Done for you. Yeah. And here's something interesting too, is that sometimes my technology like could get me into hot water, right? Because people see that and it's like, oh, this is going to make it easy. And it's like, yes, right. yes, no. Yes, depending. You know, like, so like, uh, so it's, it's really interesting. Like, you know, like marketing that works and things that sell aren't always things that are good. And, uh, so, so I, I think it all just comes back to like, if you're an early creator, um, mm. focus on that product and something that's really going to work, talking to people, like trying things out, being, being okay to sell something that's not perfect, but having the, the, um, the commitment to make it good. Right. So like people are always afraid to sell things when they don't have something, but like, obviously you're going to have to sell something before it's ready. Every, every product is not as good as it could be. Every one of them, the early ones, the later ones. And so everyone deserves the ability to throw it out there. Just be willing to make it good when it doesn't work. And you'll like, there'll be some people that just don't like you and, but they probably wouldn't have liked you anyway. Um, most of the people, if you, if you do that, like, and you make good on your promises, they'll still, they might not continue to work with you, but they'll, uh, they won't talk bad about you. They, they'll, they'll be like, Steve really believed in what he was talking about and it didn't work out, but he made it good. He refunded me mm -hmm. or he kept trying to come up with an option and I felt satisfied, um, with that. So there are always early adopters out there that will, so that will, that will buy from your passion and your commitment. Before I, I let you go, man, because I feel like, man, Stephen, you and I can, we can vibe all yeah, day, man. Sure. I feel like we, it's, it's, we can, we can go <laughs> well, on we can and do on it. And we on. can do another version of, for like, part two. If you want. Yeah. Definitely gonna make that happen, man. So let's do this, man. For for the creators, and I want to just touch on repurposing because I know we we touched oh, sure, on automation sure. and setting up the process. But quickly, just give me the Twitter version. What would you say for the creators? Like, let's say, let's say some of the top tools uh, for a solo content creator specifically that wants to repurpose content. What's hot right now? What do you what do you recommend? I mean, I still think Descript is like still one of the, my favorites agree record that podcast make the clips super simple you don't need to you don't even need a video editor um and you know you can create the captions i mean really fast um and you know like some of the basic uh, transcription tools and some of the ai like a couple of a couple of little automations would make it easy for you to record a video and then turn that also into a text post um it's getting pretty easy to turn those into images too starts to get into a little bit of more complicated technology that I don't want people to get bogged down into. But um, like super simple to script. It's so, it's so powerful and it's been so powerful for so long. Agree. Okay. So Descript, and we'll make sure that we link it up. I've actually uh, spoken to some of their product product developers and this was about three years ago and to see how it's grown and evolved. I mean, now it's like, a super tool <laughs> yeah, it's like, and, and you know it has it does it all you know Highly yeah you know why i like descript is because i always felt like they were one of those companies that created a product where it was useful and good but it didn't destroy the content in the process so there are some interesting like ai tools that are coming out like like where you can just give it a video and it creates clips from you mm -hmm. i still haven't seen something yet that like pumps out just really good clips. There's the Opus clips there that just came out. Yeah. It, it started to create a couple of cool clips, but like there were some things about it that just weren't quite there. And I, I was like, well, I could have just done this faster at, at Descript. I'm sure it will get there, but um, Descript is one of those marketing tools that didn't destroy the content in the process of just selling you a cool tool. And a lot of marketing automation tools, they're selling you something that's not really good for you. And so like, I, th I always felt like Descript sold you a wholesome product that was good for you. I'm, I'm going to clip that, Steven, and then tweet it <laughs> to, to Descript. And I think that right there, man, we may get hooked up with something special. You never know. That was that was nice, man. That was a nice endorsement. I've, 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 I've done so many endorsements for Airtable, for Zapier, for <laughs> oh, Descript. And, yeah, and they've that. never reached out to me. Like, <laughs> Keep on, well, bro. Keep on. I, volume. I feel, Let's go. More and more. I feel like uh, like they've, they haven't given me my due yet. So. Hey, come on, guys. <laughs> come on, Air Airtable. Let's go. 
All right. So listen, um, let's go ahead and close out with this, man. I'm, I'm curious to know your thoughts on this. And this has been amazing. Hopefully you guys have been getting a ton of value. I know it's been great talking about all this because I can go on for days about what we're talking about, automation and scaling your content creation business. If there's one creator factor, Stephen, every creator should learn, uh, master or understand, what would that be? Well, it is value creation, right? So like some, some people are naturally good at entertaining and, um, or they're just naturally good looking or something like that. Like we're not all blessed with those, those, those abilities. I don't know that I could go out and become a better entertainer. I probably could. I could take some, some, uh, improv, uh, improv classes or something and, <laughs> and get better about it. But just, I think everyone can get better at articulating themselves and uh, the faster you can get a point across to somebody and the more clear and the more impactful it can have, the better you're going to do. We brought it back to articulation, man. It's articulation, be, right? communication. That's right. Value Become creation. a better communicator. That's it. That's it. I, I think there's something really neat about like sitting down with an idea and mulling over it for a few extra minutes that, that you you wanted to skip it. You wanted to you wanted to record 20 videos in an hour, but instead you recorded two. You spent a little bit more time uh, articulating that value, and. Uh, I, I, I think the hardest part about it is that like getting good at that just takes practice. And like, so sometimes you might sit down for an hour and record a video and it's just like, after you watch it, you're like, this is, this is terrible. You know, it's hard, right? Mm -hmm. So much, so much time went into something that was so crappy. Um, and, but like learning how to like, just, just look at that. You're just like, Oh man, I made that video valuable just by like talking about it differently. There's something really kind of, almost magical about that. Like I was watching a TikTok about magnets and I was like, oh, that's, I was like, magnets are kind of one of those ma magical entities out there. But I guess crafting and articulating a message is kind of magical in a way. And uh, I think if you look at it that way and have fun with it and see it that way, then you might have the ability to give it the extra attention that it needs. SGPlabs.com, my fellow creators. <sighs> It's and great also, to connect, man. I'm glad. I'm glad you bro, reached out. 